Welcome back to the solutions manual. In this video, we will solve the problem 2-55 from R.C. Hebeler Engineering Statics 12th edition. According to this problem, if F2 is 150 LB and theta is 55 degrees, we have to determine the magnitude and direction measured clockwise from the positive x-axis of the resultant force of the three forces acting on the bracket. So now to solve this problem, First of all, we have to resolve each of the forces into their components. So F1 force has a single component in the X direction, so we don't have to resolve it. For the F2 force, I have two components, one in a vertical direction and one in a horizontal direction. Also for the F3 force, I have two components, one in a vertical direction and one in a horizontal direction. So let's label them. The vertical component of the F3 force is F3 12 upon 13 ratio of opposite over hypotenuse because we have to consider this 5, 12 and 13 triangle. The horizontal component of the F3 force is F3 and the ratio of adjacent which is 5 divided by hypotenuse which is 13. For F2 force, let's consider the whole angle as alpha. So alpha is theta plus 25 degrees. If this angle is alpha, then this angle is also alpha because they are alternate angles, so they are equal. So the horizontal component of the F2 force is F2 cos alpha, and the vertical component is F2 sin alpha. So now we have resolved all the forces into their components. So now we can find the x and y component of the resultant force. So for the x component of the resultant force, let's call this FRx, we have to do summation of forces in x direction. And I am considering the right hand side as positive. So we have FRx equals to F3 into 5 upon 13 plus F1 plus F2 cos alpha and if I substitute the values I have FRx is equals to F3 which is 52 into 5 upon 13 plus F1 which is 80 plus F2 which is 150 into cos alpha and alpha is theta plus 25 and theta is 55 so 55 plus 25 it means 80 degrees so alpha is 80 degrees so upon simplification frx comes out to be 126.05 lbs and we can see that the frx is positive and earlier we had considered the right hand side is positive, so FRx is directed in the right hand side. Now we have to do the same for the y component of the resultant force. So for FRy, we have to do summation of the forces in y direction. I am considering the up direction as positive. So FRy is equals to F3 12 upon 13 minus F2 sin alpha and alpha is 80 degrees. So when I substitute the values, I have FRY is equals to F3 which is 52 into 12 upon 13 minus F2 which is 150 into sin 80. So upon simplification, FRY comes out to be negative 99.72 LBs. And we can see that we are getting a negative answer. And earlier we had considered the upward direction as positive. But we are getting a negative answer. So it means in actual, the FRY is directed in the downward direction. So these are the vertical and the horizontal components of the resultant force. Now we have to find the magnitude of the resultant force. 
So we can use the Pythagoras theorem. So for fr, we have fr equals to square root of frx square plus fry square. So when I substitute the values, I have fr is equals to square root of 126.05 square plus minus 99.72 square. So upon further simplification, magnitude of the resultant force comes out to be 160.73 lbs. So this is our first answer. Now we have to find the direction measured clockwise from the positive x-axis of the resultant force. So if I draw the resultant force separately, then it would look something like this. Let's call this positive x. This is the negative x. This is the positive y and this is the negative y. The frx is directed towards the positive x-axis and fry is directed in the negative y-axis. So this is the frx and by head to tail rule of vector addition this is the fry and the resultant will be drawn from the tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector. Let's label them. So this right here is your frx and this is the fry and this is the fr. And since we have to measure it clockwise from the positive x-axis, so we have to find this angle. Let's call this phi. And for phi, we can use 10 phi is equals to, we just have to use the magnitudes. So the magnitude of fry divided by the magnitude of frx. So when I substitute the values, I have 10 phi is equals to and we just have to put here magnitudes. So negative 99.72 divided by 126.05. And since we just have to use here magnitudes, so I'm going to put a modulus before them. So 10 phi is equals to 99.72 divided by 126. 0 0.05 and you can see that the negative sign has been removed because we had used the modulus. So upon further simplification we have phi is equals to 10 inverse of 99.72 divided by 126.05 and phi comes out to be 38.35 degrees. So this is our second answer. So this is it for this problem. I hope you would find this video helpful. If you do, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and also turn on the bell icon for the daily updates. And if you have any questions or any doubts, then feel free to ask in the comment section and I will answer it as soon as possible. To learn more about Hebeler force vector problems, I have a link of a playlist on the top right corner of this video. Also, I will leave the link of the playlist in the description so you can check that out as well. Thank you.